In previous videos, we looked at formulating properties in terms of sets and some techniques for counting the number of elements uh, in sets. In this and the next uh, few videos, we want to look at these ideas and see how they apply to discuss uh, probability. Uh, now, when we speak about the probability of an event, uh, what we're really saying is that uh, there is a certain likelihood that this event is going to occur. Now, when we talk about the occurrence of this event, we, we really need a context to discuss that. And that is normally done in the uh, form of an experiment. For example, if we want to conduct a poll, we're going to ask some questions. Uh, that's an experiment. Uh, if we're going to examine some sort of a data set, uh, then we're going to be interested in extracting some information from that. Uh, or we might be interested in the outcomes of some simulation. And we'd be interested in whether or not the certain outcomes uh, occur. Now, the key word here is outcomes. Uh, we're interested in the context will be the set of all possible outcomes. And so if what we call is the sample space, and this is usually denoted by the set S, is just the collection of of all possible outcomes of the experiment. Now I should emphasize the word uh, possible here. And the event that we might be interested in, the events are just going to be subsets. subsets of the sample space. So for example, if we're going to construct a poll over here, uh, we might be interested in some uh, law that's being proposed and we want to see about people in favor of it. You ask a question, the responses or the outcomes that we're looking for are yes, no, and then of course maybe there's some people that haven't made up their mind, so we might want to uh, include an option of maybe. And so this would be the, uh, the sample space involved. And the outcomes that we would be interested in, the uh, event might be the collection of all uh, yes answers. Now, if we had a collection of data that we wanted to analyze, we might be, what kind of information would we record? Well, for uh, each uh, object in the data set, we might want to know the gender, male, female. Uh, we might want to know whether or not uh, a, a person was, say, employed or uh, unemployed. Uh, we might want to know something about salary or income level. So we'd have a categories of income to place people in and maybe educational level. Uh, and then we would set up a schema to uh, designate uh, each item from the data set uh, by evaluating each of these criteria. And then we might be interested in some event that would be uh, involving, say, all males who were uh, employed with a certain income level and certain educational attainment. Uh, now, how do we go about and calculate the, uh, the probability of, of some event? Well, as I said, it's the probability is the likelihood that this event will occur. So if we know what the sample space is, it's going to be the fraction of the sample space that this event uh, belongs to this event. So if we designate the pound sign as number, then this would just be the number of ways that the event occurs over the total number of possible uh, outcomes. Okay, let's see if I can 
take a look at a, a simple example here. Uh, okay, let's do an example where we uh, experiment. Let's toss a coin. One of the simplest type of experiment. And what are the outcomes going to be? Well, the coin is going to fall either face up and call it a head or a tail. So this is the set of all possibilities. Our sample space are these two values here. And to make life simple, let's say the event we're interested in is just going to be uh, whether or not it's a head or not. Okay, so how would we calculate the probability of a head? Here? Probability of this event. Well, uh, there's two ways we can do this. Uh, first, let's look at what's called a theoretical. Okay, now to do that, if I look at, at this and say, well, there's two possible elements in the sample space, heads or tail, and the event I'm interested in is just one of those two ways, and so the probability will be a half. Now, if I do that, uh, this is going to be the number of elements in the event, and down here is the number of elements in the uh, sample space. And uh, now, this relies on a certain assumption. I mean, we're making the assumption here that the coin is fair and things like this, and so the assumption is is that each of the outcomes of the uh, sample space outcome is equally likely so if you're going to randomly pick uh, uh, a bunch of names from a hat or something like that you assume it's all uh, distributed in such a way that each uh, name has the same likelihood of, of occurring. Now, uh, there's another way of calculating this probability. Um, I'll stick with it. Now, it's okay. Now, and it's called the experimental. Now, in this may, you actually, in this method, we actually do an experiment. So, before I started this video, I sat down and tossed the coin a few times. And so here were the outcomes. Uh, I got a head, a tail, tail, head, a tail. Then there was a string of heads here. And finishing up with a tail and a head. Oh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I tossed the ten. Okay. Now, if I'm going to calculate the probability of a head in this experiment, the way I would do this is I would just look at the number of heads divided by the number of possible uh, trials here. Okay, each trial was going to be either head or tail. And I see that there was going to be one, two, three, four, five, six heads out of the ten. And so this was six tenths, uh, which uh, is 60%, 0.6, which of course is different than the one half that I got before. Now, um, well, what's going on here? Why did I get something different? Well, the, the theory says that if you're constructing an experiment here, then the uh, probability, or we'll just write it like this, of a head, or whatever the event may be, uh, number of heads, number of trials, this is going to approach the theoretical value as the uh, number of trials approaches infinity. Of course, this can lead to some sort of fallacies and things like this. You can always hit a big string of, uh, of, uh, of heads or maybe string of tails or something like this. Okay, so uh, we'll look at some more examples in the next video.